Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with corn tortillas. That's right, there are a few recipes simpler than homemade corn tortillas, which is why they take years to master. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's usually the way it is with super basic recipes, like bread, pasta, and other things that only have a couple ingredients, since those really are dependent on perfecting the right technique. Of course, having said that, even a lousy homemade corn tortilla is going to be way better than those round pieces of cardboard from the market. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by mixing up our dough. And that's going to start with some corn flour, but not just any corn flour. We're looking for one sold as instant corn masa flour, also sometimes sold as masa harina. And generally in American supermarkets at least, it comes in a white bag with yellow and green lettering. And I'll give more info about this on the blog, but the difference between this and regular corn flour is that this is produced with corn that's cooked first, whereas regular corn flour is simply ground dry corn, which would not work out the same in this recipe. And then to our masa flour, all we need to add to make the dough would be some salt, as well as some hot tap water. All right, I've tried this with cold water, and I've tried this with boiling water, and it's been my experience that hot tap water works the best. And what we'll do once that's been added is simply stir everything together with our fingers until it all sort of pulls together, at which point a lot of people stop, but I don't. I'm a big believer in giving this a couple minutes of kneading to sort of smooth it out. And by the way, since corn doesn't have any gluten, this dough's not really gonna feel the same as you knead it as a wheat dough would, where it sort of starts to get some elastic, some elastic, starts to get sort of elastic. But nevertheless, it's the same sort of kneading motion. And like I said, I'll do that for a couple minutes. And by the way, it's probably super obvious, but I'll tell you anyway. If this seems too dry, add some water. And if it seems too wet, add a little more flour. Because what we're trying to end up with is something with roughly the texture of Play-Doh. So this is looking just about perfect. But like I said, if this was too wet and sticking to my hands, I would add some more flour. Or if it was crumbling apart, I would add some more liquid. But like I said, this was just right. And then what we'll do once our dough is formed is take a damp kitchen towel or some paper towels and place it over our dough so it doesn't dry out. Because what we really need to do is let this sit for about 20 to 30 minutes before we use it. Okay, some people don't think you have to. Those people are crazy. Because I think this resting is a key step. And while that does rest, let me move on and show you what else we're going to need. And we'll start with one of these cast iron tortilla presses, which really do make this whole operation way, way faster and easier. And these are relatively affordable. You're talking like 20 bucks or so. And when you factor in how much money you're going to save on tortillas at the store, it totally pays for itself. And then besides that, we're also going to need a couple pieces of plastic, which I've cut in rounds the same size as the press. And while plastic wrap will work, I do recommend cutting up a zip top bag since the plastic is much thicker and easier to work with. So our press is ready and our plastic's prepped. And then besides that, we're also gonna need a nice clean kitchen towel that I've placed over this pie dish. And we'll discuss this further in a few minutes, but basically we're gonna put our cooked tortillas into this. And believe it or not, that's where all the magic's gonna happen. But like I said, we'll get to that. For now, let me go ahead and show you how to form these tortillas. So assuming our dough is sat for at least 20 minutes, we'll pull off a little piece, enough to roll into about an inch and a half ball. Okay, if you're into weights, that's gonna be about one ounce, or about 28, 29 grams, if you happen to be of the metric persuasion. And what we'll do is place that in the center of one piece of plastic, and we'll give it a little press, and then we will cover that with our second piece of plastic. And that's it, the top of the press goes over like this, and then we'll use this arm to apply the pressure. And if everything goes according to plan, you're gonna end up with a perfectly round, beautifully thin tortilla. And as you remember from physics class, the more pressure you apply, the thinner this is going to get. All right, so that's looking pretty good right there. But that was the easy part. Now for the dismount and the placing in the pan. So what we need to do is peel off that top piece. And then I'm going to turn that plastic around like this. And then line up my index finger of the opposite hand right along the edge here. And gently turn it over and carefully peel off that second piece of plastic. And then very important, we're gonna transfer this into the pan with our palm remaining up. And I'm gonna do this in slow motion. And as soon as that first edge catches the pan, and we can see it's gonna lay in flat, we simply let that slide off our palm. And that's it. Okay, if you throw this into the pan overhand, like me going out for one of my famous tomahawk dunks, it can and probably will stick to the pan. So I'll show you that again, but we wanna gently lay it in as shown. And then we're going to let that first side cook for about 30 to 45 seconds before turning it over. Which is what I'm going to do right now. And then what we'll do is give that second side about a minute. 
before we flip it over to perform the old press and puff. So what we'll do is give that second side about 60 seconds and then flip it over and give it a little press with the spatula. And hopefully those layers separate and we get a little bit of puff. Although sometimes you gotta press it twice. There we go. See that, we got a little bit of puff. And I will let that go for about 30 seconds like that. At which point I'll flip it over one last time and let it cook for just a few more seconds. And that's it, we just made a homemade corn tortilla. And by the way, your first few are never gonna come out as good as your last few. That's just the way it works. And then what we'll do once that's done is quickly transfer it into our napkin line dish and quickly wrap it back up. And then we'll go ahead and continue pressing and making our tortillas, stacking and wrapping them in this napkin until we're done. All right, so let's watch this one more time. We will carefully lay our tortilla in palm up, letting it gently slide off our hand. And then we'll give that first side about 30 to 45 seconds, at which point we flip it over and give the second side about a minute. And then everybody's favorite part, we flip it over and give it the old press and puff. And for whatever reason, as you do these, they usually get better and better. And you can see we got pretty much full puffage here. And by the way, that's why I think it's so important to let your dough rest. I think it significantly increases your chances to get a perfect puff. But anyway, once that puffs, I usually flip it back over for a few more seconds. And then, like I said, we'll transfer it into our napkin. And you'll notice as these are coming out of the pan, they're gonna seem a little bit dry and a little bit stiff. But as they sit steaming with each other in this napkin, an amazing transformation happens, which we will get to, but not quite yet because I wanted to take a minute and show you what to do if you don't have a tortilla press. All right, another method that will totally work is pressing this with some kind of pot or pan. All right, as long as it has a flat bottom, you should be fine. And once flattened, it should look exactly like one that came out of the regular press. So basically this method works just as well. It's just not as fast and easy. So there's one alternative, but wait, there's more. Another method would be to press these between two cookbooks that we placed on a chair. And then all we need to do is sit on that to flatten it out. And as you're about to see, that works out very nicely. Although if you do use this method, we don't call them tortillas anymore. They're referred to as tortillas. So there you go, two very effective non-tortilla press methods. But anyway, one way or another, we'll go ahead and press and cook the rest of our dough. Stacking in and wrapping as we go. And then once we're done, we don't enjoy these right away. Okay, we have to leave these wrapped up in that napkin, stacked and steaming for at least 15 to 20 minutes. And what's gonna happen during that time is they're gonna go from something that's sort of stiff and dry to these beautifully soft and supple and flexible tortillas. And I was gonna say just like from the store, but they're way better than that. So please make sure you give these enough time in your napkin. All right, you are after all the big poppy of making sure these are floppy. And even though mine were, they were still a little warm, so I wrapped them back up and let those cool to room temp, which is my preferred method to get the full effect. And yes, if you wanna spend a few extra bucks, they do sell these insulated containers made especially for holding tortillas, which does the same thing here as the napkin. But since this has always worked out so well for me, I've never felt the need to buy one. Although those are nice for keeping a whole bunch warm during service. Speaking of which, once these are room temp, they are ready to serve either by steaming to make tacos or enchiladas or whatever. Or of course, we could fry those crisp in a pan and make tostadas. But I didn't do any of those. I just heated up a couple in this dry pan, which generally you only want to do for a few seconds, just to warm them through. If you do them too long like I did, the outsides are going to start to crisp up, which is still fine. But anyway, I warmed up a couple of those. And about 90 seconds later, I was garnishing a pretty amazing duck taco, so I could get some kind of eating shot here. And no, I'm not doing a video for duck tacos. That is just some chopped up fried duck confit. And as the old cliche goes, there is nothing like homemade fill in the blank. In this case, corn tortillas. But it really is so true. Just a completely different thing altogether than that stuff from the supermarket that was some brand you can actually stand a table with. And by the way, I thought I'd overcook my tortillas and they were gonna be too stiff to make a taco. But what'll happen is the moisture from your filling will sort of soften them up. So this actually did come out fairly fantastic. But anyway, that's it, my technique for making corn tortillas. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and finish this taco. And hopefully what you're gonna do is go find some of this masa flour and make your own batch of homemade corn tortillas. So I really do hope you give these a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.